Yeah, hello, this is Captain. Welcome to the Build Challenge Echo Part 1. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the first eight builds submitted to my Build Challenge Echo, which was to make a 1950s era either car or truck using my chassis. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rules. Build Challenge Echo. This challenge is to build a 1950s car or truck. This is a land-based challenge. The competition is mainly aesthetics. The competitor will use either the car or truck chassis or at least the workshop. This will allow the competitor to focus on the look of the vehicle. The mechanics will be stock. Chassis, you may not change the engine or transmission, mechanics, or micros. It is to remain stock. The challenge is about making the shell. You may move and resize the wheels or the pipe into the wheels. You may repipe fuel and exhaust. You may remove the flywheel. Spirit of the challenge is to build a car or a light truck that has the feelings of a 1950s using the stock chassis. The build size will be limited to the car garage at the North Meyer Outpost. Infant electricity and fuel off, vehicle damages on. A new build not previously released to the workshop. Let's operate on the honor system here. This should be a newly started build at the time of the challenge. XML, cosmetic and grip, size, whatever will fit in the car garage at the North Meyer Outpost. Power, the required chassis, either car or truck, cost 50000 Testing methodology. I'll launch the car or truck at the North Meyer Outpost. I'll drive to St. Alexander Hospital. I will then check out the look and features of the vehicle grading. Spirit of the challenge. How well does it conform to the spirit of the challenge? 1 to 10. Human factors. How well am I able to interact with it? 1 to 10. Handling. 1 to 10. Aesthetics. 1 to 10. And workshop page. 1 to 10. The winners will be a points winner, captain's favorite, and community favorite. Winners will be featured in the end credits of my videos for a month. Winners will have Discord rules added. Rules will be open for a discussion from the posting of this announcement till 7-17-23. As you can see, some rules were changed above. And, and here's the workshop page for the first build. So we have the Triple C Ford F3. So let's look at some screenshots. I have towing a boat there. Some racing stripes. This one has some modules with it. Some badging. Nice uh, thumbnail there by Citrus. Built this truck out of Captain's truck chassis to participate in his challenge. This truck comes with a supercharged six-cylinder boxer engine with a five-speed transmission that powers this truck to 110 kilometers an hour. Uh, some crossout stuff there. I made a rescue towing, a fluid tank module that it can attach onto the flatbed so it can be used in career for rescues and towing jobs or stealing fuel. That's good. It's super easy to use to start the engine, turn the key, then select gear up down, release the parking brake, uh, top right flip switch on dashboard, then drive away with WS and steering is AD. Seat hotkeys, one left directionals, two right directionals, and hazard lights. Max speed is 110 kilometers an hour. Fuel tank is 368 liters. Transmission is a five speed manual. Six cylinder engine. Uh, mass is five ninety nine and cost is twenty thousand two twenty five. Credits: ZE wheels steering, uh, retro dashboard, and I would also little uh, tip: use my chassis. Please put that on there as well. I'd appreciate that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the build. And so here we are with the first build by Citrus. So let's take a look. All right. So we'll start with a walk around here. So I like the uh, grill design. Looks nice. The Ford emblem here. And you can see the racing stripe continues across the front. That's why it's white there. Nice use of lamps here. Directionals in there. Nice little curved bumper. I'm curious what you used for that. That's nice detail, this bumper here. I really like that. I have to look at that see what you used. But that uh, nice detail there. What's behind it? This piece of uh, window piece there. It has some mirrors, or some, uh, yeah, mirrors on it. Hood lock, we'll do that one. I like the fender wells. Fender wells look nice. Has a step. That's a really cool feature. I like that. Use the old uh, HUD there. It's kind of a bracing for it. A little bit of equipment in there. We have the light cord and the pintle. We have some exhaust there. Nice wood detailing in the back here. Keep active block on there. Some lock for the, for the uh, modules. Looks like those must be the cameras for the mirrors. Nice uh, bit of detailing here, using some window pieces, XML window pieces for the uh, wooden railings on the back of the bed. 
a little bit of XML window here. You can see it looks like a little bit of color detailing there. I've got some good shadows in there. Let's do the hood latch on this. Is there a hood latch on this side? Maybe not. Maybe you need power. So we'll go ahead in there. Nice uh, entry light comes on when we come in. That's a cool feature. We have a fire extinguisher and the hose anchor there. Very cool. Nice looking dash in here. Nice recess on that. That's cool. I like that. So it must be an XML piece there. A little bit of detailing there. have a shifter. Let's see. Let's go ahead and I'll bring up the workshop page. We can use that alongside. All right, so let's go. We'll follow the instructions here. So start the engine, turn the key. All right, so a uh, nice dash here. Looks like it is uh, standard instruments, but stretched, which is cool. I like that. That's a interesting feature there. Uh, we have light selector there. So it looks like headlights, high beams. Nice. Has a high beam light. I really like the way you did that. So it looks like it's just a stretched uh, panel. Uh, look, so that looks cool. I like that. And then back to off. We have parking brake release. We have trailer brake release. Curious how to open that hood. Let me uh, quickly, I want to see with that. So, interested why that's not. Let's see. Hood lock is off. Let's see if I can't open it somewhere else. We'll get, we'll go through everything here. I saw something down here. What's that? That is hood. Okay, right there. Hood. Okay, there we go. So that's neat. Good detailing on that. Let's take a look here. So it looks nice there. Good detailing in here. Look, you know, it looks like a fully fleshed out um, engine bay, which is cool. That's some good detailing in there. Very cool in there. Nice. I like the multi-stage hood on there. So trailer brake will leave off. And we'll go ahead and we'll reach, read the H menu. So AD steering, WS throttle brakes. Up down is the gear stick. Uh, left directional, right directional hazard. So let's take a look at those. Left directional. Oh, we have flashing lights there too. And I assume uh, hazards is three. There we go. Three is hazards. Let's stick on the brakes. Nice. We get uh, bright RGBs on there. Very cool. Uh, let's go into reverse. Nice. We get reverse lights. Good detail there. Nice, and let's go ahead, and we're just going to take a short drive over to the hospital just to make sure it runs right. Nice uh, moving gear shifter. I always like to see that. I do like the stretch panel. That's kind of cool. A little bit, a uh, little bit sensitive on the steering, but it's not bad. You know, it's definitely controllable. It's just a little bit seems a little bit sensitive to me, but it's not bad. Yeah, it's a little bit sensitive. I go a little bit less sensitive on the steering. You, you know, figure that uh, not only is it a pickup, but it's a pickup truck from the 1950s, which is likely, you know, uh, a lot of them did not have power steering, so they were not super uh, twitchy. So I would just cut down the sensitivity just a little bit. But, you know, again, that's personal preference. I really like the, uh, the mirrors. The mirrors are cool out front. I might have to do more of those mirrors out front. You do have blind spot mirrors, especially on tractors, that are like that. Uh, that are really cool because you have, um, you know, they're down here. And in game, it's much easier to see these. In real life, you know, you can you can easily turn a mirror here. But I really like these. These came out really good. Uh, excellent job on this. I like the detailing in here. For example, let's look at some more details while we're here. That's, you know, the aesthetics are the main point of this challenge. Like, there's a really cool feature here. Um... You have the seat back here is paint blocks, which looks really cool. kind of looks like a face. Uh, these are the belts. As you can see, you have the, um, you know, the, it would be a, you know, probably a five-point harness IRL or a four-point harness, but we have the two harnesses here, so this is emulating that. So that's really cool. So it makes like a three-point harness there. have some equipment in here. You know, this is designed to be usable, so that's really cool. Good detailing on the shifter there. So nice detailing in there. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I'm missing in here. I don't think so. I really like the steps. I like the fenders. You did a good job with that. Sometimes that's hard to do in game. Engine bay looks really nice in there. It functions well. I would say just the only thing for me would be to, uh, you know, uh, decrease the steering a little bit. You got a little bit of this, you know, flickery XML here. But it's tough, you know, for those who don't know, with XML editing, you pretty much you want to go in odd sizes. 
So like if you have a one block, you can't really make it a two block because if you make it a uh, two, it's going to be uh, half a block on either side. So you kind of have to go in, in uh, triples. So, you know, it doesn't look bad, but, you know, it's a little bit of a detail there where you can kind of see it and it kind of breaks the immersion a little bit. But uh, really well done, and I enjoyed using it. And here's the next workshop page. This is the Volvo L385 Viking. So I like the uh, thumbnail here. Really well done on this. You know, nice composition there. Draws you in. Makes you want to look at it. Some nice pictures here. Always nice to see a bunch of pictures on there. Showing off the build. This is by Sergeant Cheesecake. So we have the Volvo L-385 uh, Viking. Note, this truck was built for Captain's Build Challenge Echo background. It is a rough replica of the 1950s Volvo L-385 nickname Viking. The real-life truck came in many configurations and served in many different roles, from industrial transport to military logistics. It was a workhorse. The Stormark's recreation is just that, a recreation. It's not a perfect one-to-one. -one. I like to build within the limits of the game, so keeping XML edits to a minimum is a personal preference. The only XML made is slightly increase the tire grip to counter... The layer of oil covering all of Stormarks. That's nice. I always like to see a picture included of the reference material. It's kind of nice to see what these look like. You know, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen this truck before, so that's really cool. Coming in at a cost of 13190 and a weight of just under 1.7 tons, the Volvo L-385 Viking makes for a choice truck in logistics and industrial transport. A top speed just shy of 150 kilometers an hour with minimal load makes for a quick highway transport. The taller height of the truck makes moving on uneven terrain a walk in the park. Different configuration of the truck can be found in future installments of the Frog Industries magazine. So the cost is 13190 Weight is uh, 1,668 kilograms. Instruction. Driver's seat located on the left side of the truck. Panel to the right has engine starter and parking brake release. WS is throttle. AD steering. Up down is gearing. One is interior light. Two is winch in. Three is winch out. Credits. Challenge required the use of a chassis as a base. So here is my truck chassis base. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the build. So here we are with the Viking. So let's take a look at it. Definitely conforms to the 1950s style. You see nice rounded hood there. Pretty squarish. I like that. Nice bumper on there. Looks, um, looks beefy with a winch on there. Some round uh, globes for that. Nice detailing in there. Let's do a hood latch. Nice engine compartment. You figure a truck this size will have a some gaps in there. That's pretty normal. Like if you look at the old Chevys, you know the cars were boats and they had a lot of space in there, so that looks nice in there. Nice detailing under here, like fuel tanks and steps. Tank hose anchor there. Nice detailing here on the dump body. You know you want to have this type of um, st stress members here on the dump body, so that's nice there. Nice um, roof protector on there. We have mirrors. All right, let's see what we have here. You probably want a swinging gate on a dump truck. Um, just just functionally, you'd want the gate to swing from the top. And the reason is, <laughs> we've actually had I've used these in dump trucks before. And so, for example, like we had we had one tons that we would you could drop it with chains and put it level. And that would extend the bed so you could put, uh, you know, longer stuff in there. And then what you would do is you put it up here, and then it would pin to the top, and the bottom would disconnect. And that's generally what you want with a dump truck, because when you go to dump, you don't want the rocks getting stuck in the hinge, and you don't want them getting stuck on the door. Uh, they'll break the door, so you'd have it uh, dumped from the bottom, but that's just a nitpick. Again, it's not anything that's going to cost any points. Nice paint. Paintwork here, so a little bit of detailing on that. Nice step over here. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the interior. All right, so jump on in. Nice layout in here. This is a cool uh, use of the of the equipment. I haven't seen that before. This is cool because your head will like glitch through blocks, and you'll be able to see through them. So this is a nice way to get around that. That adds a good bit of detailing. I like that. I might have to try that myself with stretching one XML. That's actually a really good idea. I like that. So we have some old-timey round gauges, as they should look. That would be what you have in the 1950s. What is this? There's the interior light. That's a nice feature there to have, especially at night in-game. So that turns on the engine and the lights, it looks like. Oh, that's interesting. So it's like a multi-phase button. That's interesting. 
Alright, so next to that we have parking brake release. We'll click on the parking brake release. So H menu is up, down is the shift gear. One is interior light. Two is winch out. Three is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, winch in and uh, winch out. So interior light, as you can see, we can actuate that button there. That's nice to have it both places. Uh, tack, kilometers an hour, battery, engine temp. Uh, we have gear indicator, a clock. All right, reverse. Some dualies on there. Let's go forward. So it drives nice and heavy like you'd expect a dump truck. That's one thing I see a lot of people do is all their trucks will behave like cars. And so it's nice to see one that, you know, it's, it steers a little bit probably faster than you would in real life. But, you know, it, it feels heavier than some of you know, other people's um, heavy truck builds. You know, a dump truck is heavy and slow, and especially from the 1950s. Let's see, why is it stopping on me? What's going on here? Let's see what's up. My engine's stopping. I'm not getting any power. Oh, you know what it was? I probably shut the engine off. Do you must... Okay, I would like to see the headlights separated from that. That's kind of weird to me that the, um... The lights automatically come on. You know, especially in-game, they can be reflective, so during the day, you may not want them on like that. So, I would just separate the headlights, but that's a little nitpick. But it definitely it has that heavy feel, which I like, so it feels like a uh, dump truck. It's a little bit fast on the steering, but not bad. You know, it's not wobbly. Uh, the last one was a little bit wobbly. Uh, if you get that starter restart there, that sound, all you have to do is change the cutout so that the starter cuts out a little early. Again, it's my panel, so I'm not, you know, critiquing anybody on how they um, organize the panel. But, um, yeah, I would just, I would separate that headlight on there. It just seems a little weird to me that it kills the engine uh, when you try to shut your headlights on. Let's really quickly check mirrors. Uh, mirrors offer pretty good visibility. As you can imagine, you know, we're kind of limited in game. We can't really rotate these, uh, the monitors themselves. So you can rotate the cameras now, but you can't really rotate the monitors. But it does give me some good information. For example, you know, I can start this back up. I can release the parking brake. Let's see. I want to go in, see this driveway to the right. I want to back into that driveway. So I'll go in reverse. And I'll watch. And there we go, right in the driveway. So definitely, you know, mirrors are useful. I know a lot of people don't with just going third person, but, you know, I think it's a fun new way to kind of, you know, to work it. Stay out of third person, it's, it's a fun little test. And so, like, something like that, that mirror allowed me to pretty much go right down this road. Again, the steering's a little bit twitchy for me, but not bad by any stretch of the imagination. So, that's really cool. It's nice to have mirrors on there. Uh, Detailing-wise, it's nice. I like the Volvo on there. It looks it looks period correct. I would just first, you know, this looks a little bit extensive to me. For example, personally, I like the way this bed looks up to here. Uh, personally, you know, just aesthetics-wise, what I would do is I would move that in. But again, this could be just this could be a design feature of the truck I'm not sure about. So, you know, just um, personally, I would move that in a little bit. This looks a little weird to me at back here. But again, that could be something that was on the real truck, so I'm not sure. But uh, it functioned really well. Nice truck. And uh, thank you for posting. And here's the next workshop page. So we have the Corvette C1. So nice work on the thumbnail now, there. As you can see, it has a frame and has the uh, the Corvette badge on there. That's nice. Uh, some good pictures in here. Nice work Nice work with the pictures there, giving the... Uh, the workshop page a little bit of zazz. This is by Mr. G. So the uh, Chevy Corvette C1. The Corvette C1 is the first generation of Corvette sports car produced by Chevrolet. It was introduced late in the 1953 model year and produced through 62. I remade it in game on a one-on-one -on -one scale using Captain Cockrell's car chassis for his Build Challenge Echo competition. This uses his Pat Flat 6 and a 5-speed manual transition. Both a 6-cylinder and a 4-speed were options possible for this model. With the 5th gear, we can assume being a home modification. I like that little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of shtick there for, you know, 
most of these uh, 1950s cars had terrible four-speed transmissions. So, uh, you know, a good way to kind of work it in with that chassis that I kind of put in there. Uh, notice all C1 convertibles were all C1 Corvettes were convertibles. So I created mine in-game as a working convertible with the top hiding in an area in the trunk like the real vehicle. And realistically, it's not super fast, nor does it turn fast or brake fast, but it does look cool as hell. Also hold the horn for surprise. So it's nice to see, you know, uh, 1950s cars didn't have power steering. Power steering was a little bit sluggish, uh, especially if you're going slow speed. You really had to muscle it. Like I've had to drive some power steering trucks or some trucks with no power steering, and it's a lot of muscling. The cars were much better, and so it's nice to have a little bit of replication on that. So nice uh, GIF here on the workshop page there showing the convertible top. That's cool. Procedures. Driving. Enter the driver's seat. You can use 3 to close the door. 2. Start the engine using 6. Wait for cars idle to be stable. Up, down to shift into gears. Uh, convertible top. Press 2. Specifications. Uh, length is 5 meters. Height is 1.5 meters. Max speed 95 miles an hour. Fuel is 13 gallons. Power plant, pat flat six, uh, two player seats. It costs 11,137. Some notes and warnings. If the convertible top seems to break or break through due to a hard bumper collision, reopening, closing, it should fix it. The refuel anchor is on the right side at the bottom of the door. Microcontrollers, the car chassis. And thanks to Pilot for helping with a horn. And let's go ahead and take a look at the build. And here we are with the Corvette. So let's go ahead and take a look at it here. So extensive XML on this one. I, I do really like these uh, rockets into the lamps. That gives some really nice detailing. Uh, it helps round out the hoods. It's hard to get some uh, reasonably round hoods here. You know, you get a little weirdness with XML editing. It's why I don't do too much of it. I do certainly appreciate the effort that goes in XML editing. Like these are fins, it looks like. You know, sometimes you get some weird things like gaps here. So sometimes XML is great. Sometimes it, it can be a little bit iffy, but it's definitely... Uh, it shows a lot of effort in there. Cool detailing down here. We have exhaust corners. Like, there's XML all over this, Johnny, to give it a little bit of detailing. So, nice um, nice grill there. My uncle had one of these uh, when he was young. Uh, nice Corvette badge there. I like the racing stripe there. It, um, you know, it's not a race stripe. The Corvettes had this white in the door panel there. But, you know, that's what I meant. But, um... You know, a little bit of more rounding attempt there. Uh, whip. Looks a little bit funky back here. You know, not not bad. But, you know, I personally did like a little bit more rounder look. But, um, you know, definitely some good effort on that. And especially that this works with the Corvette top. Or the Corvette. The convertible top. So that's uh, nice there. Uh, 45s here on the taillights it looks like. More emblem back there. But it's definitely hard to get these things in a small package. You know, we're very limited. I wish we'd get some more parts so we didn't have to do as much XML editing. Because as you can see, it kind of, you know, there's some parts sticking over here and, and having to use a HUD. And so you get a piece of glass there. You know, I certainly like the effort on it. Let's look inside here. So you sit really low. It's, it's hard to get you to be able to sit low in game. Uh, part of it, you know, putting the gearboxes in there, I don't mind looking at them because I know what you're going for. You know, Corvettes, you sat next to the tunnel. And so the tunnel would go here for the uh, for the drive shaft or the transmission to go through. And so, you know, I sat in one of my, what is it? I think it was a C, a C, what, the, what was it? It would have been a C4 Corvette, I think. Uh, my friend's C4 Corvette in college. And you sat very low and the tunnel was like, you could rest your arm on the tunnel. So good replication on that in there. So let's go ahead and we'll jump in. So as I read the instructions, it says right there on the door, uh, three to close the door. You know, a little bit of work here on the panel, trying to give us a little bit more of a rounded dash. I like that. It's not terribly usable just because the gauges are back here. Uh, you know, you really can't see your gauges. But again, that's not a huge deal. You know, most of the time you're not going to really worry about that. A little bit of a gap here with the convertible top, but again, it has a it has a cool function. Press two, and there goes the convertible top. So you know these are the sort of things that are easy to, you know, you say okay, it looks a little weird there, but it has a convertible top, which is awesome. So uh, you know that that uh, kind of makes up for that little bit of visual thing. Is it lets you do some cool things. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll press five for the horn. Uh, I probably need to sit, let me start this engine. Oh. 
So there were issues with the horn before. I've I've actually I have operated this before and worked the horn. So let's see if I can get it to work. Up, oh, press two. So I was checking out the convertible top there. Let's try the horn again. So I have made this horn work before. I know um, Mr. G was having some issues with the horn. So we'll go through some stuff. I'll respawn it. We'll try the horn one more time, and then we'll call it quits on that. But um, let's see. We have the headlights are four. Ooh. Uh, that looks good. I don't see. Okay, so we have light-up tail lights. So 45 XMLs on there. So cool detailing on the tail lights there. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and respawn it. Because I have tested this horn out before, and it worked. And Mr. G was saying that he was having some issues where sometimes it wasn't working. So I'm not I'm not able to get the horn to go. It does play La Cucaracha. I have tested it before, like I said. Uh, but uh, we'll go without it. So I'll put We'll go ahead and we'll go convertible on the way there. So shift gear is up, down. Parking brake is one. So quickly tell if, uh, let's see, we need to start it. So it takes a little bit to get it started. So let's check, quickly check the wheels while it's going. Brake is false. Okay, so the parking brake is off. So it starts in the off position. Again, it does say parking brake, not parking brake release. So we'll assume that. Go ahead and go in reverse. No, oh, pretty normal there. And we'll go ahead and forward. And so it, it steers heavy, which again, that's what a 1950s car should steer like. You know, it was a quote unquote sports car, but you need to understand it was for the time. You know, the cars have gotten much, much lighter. They were very heavy back then, and they didn't steer all that well. You know, uh, you know, I don't know. I assume maybe this may have had power steering, but for a lot of cars, that was an option. You know, Corvettes were higher end cars, so may have had it but a lot of cars did not have power steering so they were sluggish and heavy uh, then they went into a phase in the around the 50s where they over boosted the power steering and you it showed like these super heavy cars people were just driving around with one finger really great detailing on this you know you get a little bit of chunkiness here and there because of the XML editing some weird shadows but um, definitely you know looks nice some good detailing there uh, I wish the horn was working I had tested before it was working. It does play La Cucaracha, but Mr. G said he was having issues with the horn. Uh, so expect that might have some issues. Yeah, so this uh, this car was really well done, and uh, thank you for posting it. And the next build here is the 1955 DIM 200 Senator. So nice black and white photos here. A uh, little badge there on, on the uh, thumbnail. Uh, some pictures in here, all in black and white. This build is by Thermite. So we have the uh, 1955 DIM 200 Senator Captain Cockrell's Gaming Build Challenge Echo. This build uses the Pat Flat 6 car base. The DIM 200 Senator is a six-cylinder coupe. It takes its shape from the 1955 Studebaker Speedster designs with a few modifications, of course. It handled well for a 1950s car and can hurtle down the highway to breakneck 141 miles an hour. It features a novel no-crumple zone, is-best crumple zone technology. That's why everybody died back then. Uh, leading it and handling speed and safety wasn't enough. However, the center features a luxurious polished wood dashboard engraved with the name of the car in beautiful chrome lettering. The seats are, well, they're blue. The suspension ensures a very 1950s experience as anti-roll bars were fairly new in production cars and were not the most optimized of device at the time. In other words, expect the car to have some body roll as would be expected from a car of this era. Donk Island Motors does not encourage the use of this vehicle in excess of post speed limits or common sense limits. Injury or death sustained in this vehicle is definitely not due to any manufacturer's error or design flaws. We have more lawyers that say so. Stats, dimensions, uh, 6 meters in length, 2.25 uh, meters width, height is 2 meters general, 141 miles an hour, fuel capacity is 45 and a half gallons, engine 6 cylinder modular supercharged, transition 5 speed manual. Lights play is designed on, is based on Ohio's, and the characters are referencing the 1955 Studebaker. It is modeled after disclaimers. Driving at or near maximum speed over Stormworks roads has been linked to the cause of rapid, unplanned, spontaneous combustion of the entire vehicle, along with severe mangling of any corpses still inside the vehicle at this point. I have experienced that myself. Driving at or near maximum speed and steering may cause unwanted, unplanned, excessive rolling. Flipping this car is totally possible if you drive like a maniac with no self-preservation instincts.
So the only thing I would say is missing on this workshop page is uh, credits. Uh, remember, you use my chassis on there, so it's, it's a good thing to get in the habit of crediting anybody's stuff that you used on the build. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, build. A little bit of a uh, tall vehicle, as you can see. A little bit on the uh, oversized. I like the hood design. The hood design, some good shaping on there. A little bit of this flashy with XML. It's one of the reasons I don't use too much XML is like, you know, it looks good. You get some good angles on there, but then you get something like this and it completely draws the eye away. Uh, really cool design on the grill here. I like that. That's a neat design. Nice chonky bumper. A lot of these 1950s had chonky bumpers. I, I would not have guessed purple when I saw the black and white photo. So some nice design here. You know, it was, it was, uh, it tried a lot of cute, cool things in the 50s, some wings and, and things like that. Nice detail in here. A little bit of, you know, paint blocking. Again, this takes away the eye. You know, I understand why people do a bunch of XML. I try to keep it to a minimum, partly because of this. It's like, when the XML is clipping through, it's like, yeah, it looks cool to have some rounded shapes and stuff, but it's like, that kind of takes my eye away. Let's go ahead and let's find a way to get in the sucker. So there's a handle, so right next to it. So I like to do that myself. That's a cool thing to do is you put a little handle there and then it kind of draws you close to where it is and you can hide those. So uh, faked back seat. Let's go ahead and jump in. Kind of a beef, beef can on this one. So let's go. Uh, so this is uh, emulates some of these 1950s dashes. Is a lot of them that have the numbers out, laid out like this, and then you had uh, your speedo would go across it like that. So that's a nice feature. Senator on there with the uh, fine uh, wood dash in there. So no real instructions on here. So uh, you know, I just checked the workshop page again. No real instructions. Let's do H menu. Um, so we do have some instructions on the H menu. So I started the key. Uh, horn is space. That works. Shift gear is up, down. Two is lights. So pressing two. Let's see. Yep, we got some uh, front lamps there. That's interesting. Um, your lamps are both pointing off to the left. So uh, I, I assume you connected it to the uh, incorrect node on the composite. And they're going, they're translating... Um, left right instead of up down so you may want to take a look at that parking brake is three so it's this parking brake not release so let's assume that it is uh off to start four is pop the trunk so that's a nice spacious trunk you can fit many a body in there that's cool uh five is the hood so this is kind of like i was talking about the cavernous uh interiors a lot of these 1950s had these real big square hoods and then you didn't have all that much motor in there so uh, that's kind of cool in there. I like that. Uh, six is start, stop the engine. All right, so um, the key is just for accessories, apparently. That's fine. All right, let's go ahead, and we'll start with reverse. Reverse works, brakes. All right, we got uh, brake lights on there. Those are nice. I like those lamps. Those look cool. All right, let's go first, and we'll drive. So we're in neutral. So we have fuel, we have temp. I really like this. This is a cool uh, speedo here. This is how a lot of them were IRL. So we're gonna rev it out. Ooh, that's a little jumpy there. Now definitely a little bit of handling issues here. It's a little bit, little bit hard to control. It's not terrible, but it's a little bit hard to control. But I really like the Speedo. That's really cool. Yeah, so that's probably the suspension, why it's a little bit wallowy, or it's a little bit, um, you know, they were, they, a lot of these uh, 1950s cars were over, the suspension was too soft, and so it was very, like, rolly ride, so that's, you know, that's correct, but it's just you know, a little bit hard to con Control, especially with the high hood it's hard to see so uh, not bad but um, I really love this the work on this uh, speedometer that's really cool that's how a lot of them were was they just went flat across there uh, you get different eras and they just like try different things but really good work on this so overall this is a cool car um, I like I like the XML work I think part of the issue is you know like you can see here this flashing here 
You know, that, again, that really just, that's one of the reasons I don't like to do too much XMLing, is it just kind of ruins the look of it. Like, you know, you've got this, you know, you did a lot of work in the look, and then you get this, and it's just flashing. So it's like, you know, at that point, I would just personally not put that in there, just because it's like, it's flashing, taking your eye away from it. But it uh, looks really cool, drives drives well, a um, little bit boggy handling, but um, pretty cool car. Thanks for posting it. And the next build is the 1950s Ford Truck Whip Part 2 Challenge, Build Challenge Echo. Uh, pretty basic thumbnail on there. A couple pictures in there. This is by uh, Nivelasco. Details. Does about 90 miles per hour, has dual rear tires. This is for Captain's Build Challenge Echo. How to use. Press 6 to start. Stop the engine. WS to go. Forward, reverse, up, down, shift gear. Credit. A light truck chassis by Captain Cockrell's. Engine, uh, Pat Flight 6, Pat 5 speed. Fuel. Details, uh, 47 gallons, tire details, uh, single 5x5s, and rears are 5x5s as well. So let's go ahead and take All a look. Alright, so let's uh, go ahead and take a look. A little bit uh, squarish and on the on the oversized. As you can see, my uh, my head goes up to the fender well, so it's definitely oversized, especially with 5x5s. But uh has a cool engine feature here. looks like a, you know, a big uh, supercharged blower sticking out of the top. That's a nice little bit of detailing. Some big wing mirrors on there. You know, definitely compared to the others, you know, a much more basic paint job and some blockiness here and there. You know, it has dualies in there. You know, like a really flat back here, like even like trimming up the corners a little bit. You know, it'd be nice. Like you notice some of the other competitors had like wood decking in their back of their uh, pickup bed. That would have been nice to see something like that. A little bit basic on the detailing compared to the others. Uh, fuel anchor there. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. Now close the door. So we have lights. Let's take a look at our lights. All right. So we have lamps and then some lights above there. We have uh, running lights and some uh, yellow runnings as well. RPM, RPS, speed, miles an hour, fuel in gallons. Let's open the H menu. H menu is not very well filled out. I would definitely like to see that filled out. So on the workshop page, it says press 6 to start, stop the engine. WS to go forward, reverse, up, down, or shift gears. I would recommend uh, put that on the H menu as well. Uh, you can put that on your seat, and that also makes it so that it's easy in there. But it is on the workshop page. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll go in reverse. So we'll downshift. All right, and brakes. Oop, not much on the brakes department there. Let's go forward. All right, so it handles pretty well. It's, um, you know, like it's right where I'm putting it. It's steering. It's a little bit heavy there, but it's, you know, it's, it's kind of a bigger truck, so... I don't expect it to be a little bit. We'll downshift the gear. And we'll take this uh, turn a little bit slower. But it handles fine. But handling's pretty good. I'm not having any real handling problems at all with it. It's not rolling on me. It's just, you know, to quickly figure out how to operate it. So it drives pretty well. Uh, definitely very basic compared to the others. As you see, we're very monochromatic in here. If we look like, you know, we pretty much have, like we have a piece of paint there. Looks like didn't get fixed and blocky in here. We have an ore, ore on the top. So that's taken away from aesthetics. Uh, very basic in here compared to the others. You know, even something like putting a little window in the back. But what's that? That looks like, is that a, I don't know what that's all about. Let's check. But, you know, Again, you're being compared to your uh, fellow competitors, so, you know, a little bit more detailing would be nice to see. It, it's definitely oversized, as you can see. You know, it's it's right up, it's very tall. Uh, definitely kind of oversized, but, uh, you know, I would do a little work a little bit on the detailing here. Definitely very basic, but um, your competitors, it's a little on the basic side. Flat, you know, flat glass there. Uh, definitely, like, little, little things like this, like that oars, an eyesore. Uh, you know, a little bit of paint missing there, like, you know, it's it's black on the dash here, and then it goes to, to brown and then black there. Um, like, a little bit of paint in there. 
So just little stuff like that sticks out to me that could be easily fixed. You know, like give green micros in there, which, you know, I'd paint black to match that fender well. But, um, you know, nice build, and uh, thank you for submitting it. And the next build is the Rooster MDHT50. I uh, really like this thumbnail here. <laughs> I like how you even use the, uh, the the triangle from the standard one to put in your own information. That's kind of cool. I like that. So uh, chicken sore. Uh, 1950s rooster. This is really cool. It looks like he even put like um, a filter on there to look make it look like paper. So really good uh, thumbnail on that. I really enjoy that. Nice set of pictures in here. Again, I like to see some pictures in the workshop page. This really draws people in. And even if they don't download or use the build, you know, they say, oh, that's a cool build. And they can see that you you did some work on that. So I really like that a lot. That uh, That's really nicely done. And it is by Chicken Sore. And so we have a bunch of Chicken Sore stuff here. So really nice detail on this workshop page already. Like, you know, we have some titles in here. I know um, Chick Store does a bunch of branded stuff. So a medium duty truck produced off a commercially available chassis by a struggling rooster utility company in the 1950s. The truck was a success and raised funds for future projects. This one comes equipped with a sizable wooden sidewall, sidewall bed. Specifications. Built on top of a commercially available chassis from Pat... Uh, featuring a flat six engine with a five-speed manual transmission equipped with basic turn signals, hazards, and brake lights. Uh, gets along at about 75 miles an hour, cruising along Stormworks roads at speeds is ill-advised but doable. Operation. Flip the switch on the dash to start the engine when in neutral, the parking brake is applied. Not much to, to it. It's a simple truck. To see your gear, look at the block in front of the shifter. The blinker indicator is singular and blinks for hazards as well as left-right signals. Uh, our non-auto cancel uh, rooster utility company built for Captain Cockrell's build challenge echo. Uh, I just ask for you know it, it does say up here it used that um, it uses that, but I tend to like to see a description. If I use somebody's build in mind, for example, I use a lot of Bass Alicious's screens. Uh, I like to make sure I have a credits section with the link. Um, that really helps people out to see that, you know, that is uh, not something you made. That's something somebody else made. So just for credits, I like to usually see credits and a link to any credits uh, you use. But uh, really great workshop page, as you can see. Uh, nicely done with a really great thumbnail. Lots of great pictures here. I really like the formatting. It draws me in. So there is some accreditation here, um, there. But, um, you know, to have an actual credit with a link is nice. Getting getting in the habit of crediting people's work is, uh, is you know, a good service to them. You use something of theirs, it's nice to credit their theirs back. So a really great workshop page. So here we are with the Rooster MDHT. So really great scale-wise. You know, this looks like the proper scale for a truck. Uh, you know, I think... The last one was a little bit overscaled. This one is scaled very well. Uh, nice squared out uh, hood and uh, fender wells here, but it has a nice rounded top hood like you would have in the 1950s. So this really looks period correct. I like the grill uh, with that uh, Rooster Utility Company badging on there. I really like that. Nice bumper. This bumper looks really good. Usually I do uh, one by ones on my bumper. I think this is superior having a one by two bumper on there Having one by two wedge here and there. I really like that on this truck. It looks really good uh, But really good detail and the coloration is a uh, good color picks on there. I like that uh, Nice work on the the windows look nice in there But really well shaped, you know, I think this has a good scale uh, Really good job here on let's get a little extra light here uh, of course, I ran my flashlight. It will change the time here. I want the sun a little bit over here. Uh, but if you look at this side here, as you can see, a little bit of uh, paint block work here to show a little bit of wheel well. That gives us a little bit more of a... Uh, looks like an arched wheel. It doesn't look as as pronounced. Uh, really nice work on the wood sides. Uh, you know, you had a lot of those in older trucks. And then even modern trucks will have wood tops on them, so you can remove those. Uh, really nice work there. Good job hiding that gate. It's a little bit gross to look at when, you know, those buttons just stick out. And especially on older builds, they don't look right. So it's kind of nice to have it hidden like that. Uh, nice work on the wood floor here. I really love these wheel wells. Those look really nice. They're well done. You know, some of these things, you know, I want to, you know, I, I look at these and I want to take some of these into my own building using some of these uh, little tricks there. Uh, some rails here are nice. Some ropes in there. Very cool. But yeah, I'm really digging on that. 
bunch of lighting back here. It'll be work lights and stuff, I assume. But really nice work on this. I'm trying to see what you're using on the edges here. So, like, you know, I'm, I'm in here. You have door panel edges. So, like, I'm looking at these little details here. And I'm like, oh, that would be cool. Put that on my bill. Put these little details. So, I think that's really cool. Uh, when You know, whenever somebody can kind of look at your build and be like, oh, I want to put some of that. And I want to use some of those tricks on mine. I think that's always, you know, a, a cool compliment. So, I really, like, using little edges like this, I haven't even thought of. And that's, that's really cool. I like that. But really well done detailing-wise on this. At really well scaled. Uh, fuel hose anchor there. You know, personally, I would probably stick that fuel ho f fuel hose anchor under here. Often you had them on the trucks just under there, but that's a nitpick. Um, you know, but it does add a bit of detail on the side there, but um, really cool. Let's go ahead in here. This feels really cool in here. I like this. Uh, this has good shaping to it. Uh, let's, let's get out of my seat and kind of crouch, and we'll do some detail in here. I want to see this uh, seat. Of course, my flashlight's out, but, um, you know, nice detail in here on, looks like uh, XML block here on the seat, but uh, looks like a nice seat back. It really, that conforms well. It makes me want to look at that, see how that was done to put that in my own builds. A uh, little bit of a shift here. It looks a little bit chunky, but we're, we're tight on space here, which it should feel a little bit compact, you know, and I like that. Uh, nice detail in here. I like the dash. This feels really, really appropriate in here. It doesn't feel oversized. It feels really well scaled. Uh, nice view on it here, but it feels like a truck. I don't feel like I'm just in this big bubble canopy. Uh, we have signals, tack, thermostat, uh, speedo, and miles an hour. I, I like to see uh, you put your units in there. It lets me know what we're working with. Uh, fuel level, I'd like to see units in there. Uh, I guess that's percentage, so... Uh, on off and the instructions on the uh, workshop page said that there was a button on the dash that did that we have hood latch let's do that uh, let's look at the hood so really nice uh, did some XML in there to have a V motor uh, you know look on there really like the detailing on there we do some suspension but that re looks really cool I like that not excessive weight blocking which is nice so you have some weight blocks in there but it doesn't look excessive it adds a little bit of detail but it's not uh, brutal uh, so that's really cool. Hood latch. Let's check the H menu. So we have left, right, turn signal. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So uh, I pressed the wrong button. Left, right is my turn signal. They're right down here. Beautiful. Yeah, so that's cool. They're on the frame. That would make sense for a lot of, especially like, you know, trucks. Trucks are uh, frame on chassis. Uh, you know, back in the day, everything was frame on chassis. They didn't go to monobodies till reasonably recent. And so you would buy you know especially with trucks is you might put a van back on this you might put a box and so by leaving the lights on there um, it makes it so that you know you don't have to move it so that's really cool that's period correct I just missed that but that's really cool so we have uh, ambers up front and red in the back so let's go right and there's right and I cancel them so that's nice I really like that headlights is one we'll go ahead and turn that on so I have some headlights there. Uh, I like this yellow color you're using here, so it's not incredibly dangerously bright. Let's quickly go nighttime. Yeah, so that's that's comfortable. Like, I'm not getting a ton of light shown back in my eyes. I actually might want to look at and see what, exactly what color you're using because I really like that color. is really coming out well. Uh, yeah, that's a really cool color for the lights. L little details like that, you know, after a while is, is really nice to see. Two is the hazards. So there are my hazards. Very nice. I like the flash rate on those. Probably better than what I have. What's that? Half seconds? I usually use full, whole seconds, and I think half seconds better. Uh, you know, one thing you have here, nice little details. We have this back window, which makes it more functional. You can look back there to reverse. I really like that. So pretty uh, pretty simplistic, but it's set up well, and it has everything I want. Uh, definitely, filled out H menu is great. Uh, you know, it tells me everything where it is. It, I, it wasn't a, you know, it wasn't a guessing game where anything was. So let's go in reverse. So we have a reverse light. That's nice. Again, this is a good color. I like this color for um, the lighting. And it breaks. Uh, nice. So we get some brake lights uh, that shine back. That's nice. It breaks well. Let's go two up and let's drive from first person. You know, it feels like a clunky old truck from the 50s. You know, 
the engine sounds right. Like the last one was over revving a little bit for me. Like, you know, that was something you could do. A lot of people asked if they could reduce the revs on it. That's fine. And it looks like uh, Chicken Sword did that. Like, I haven't even shifted gears yet. There's two. And now I'm coming up to my turn. So I'm going to downshift into first. I'm going to look and look. Very nice handling. This handles perfectly. It's, it's a little bit, a little bit, maybe a little bit oversensitive, but it handles well. You know, and it feels like a truck. You know, there's my shift. It doesn't feel like a sports car masquerading as a truck. It feels like a truck, which is nice. You know, it's not buzzing in my ear. It sounds really good. You know, so good, good uh, RPS range on that. Yep, it, it goes exactly where I want it to go. I don't have any problems. Let's give this one an extra step because I'm really enjoying driving this one. Let's go in reverse. Uh, mirrors, I, I get why a lot of people aren't putting mirrors on there. They're tough in game to make look good. I really like Citrus's um, use of putting them, you know, up on the hood. That makes them a lot more usable. But, like, this with the window, like I was talking about this window, like, look, I can, I can put this truck right where I want it in reverse. I would probably, if I were you... Just a nitpick here. I would go a little bit lower on the gear ratio in reverse. Uh, just so it's a little bit slower in reverse. But that's about it, man. This is a great truck. I really enjoy this. Uh, let's go ahead. Do we have a parking brake? Where's parking brake? I don't don't see the park. Oh, parking brake is if it says if it's a neutral parking brake applied. Okay, that's good. And that is a game thing. That's not a this build thing. So if you ever get that stuck door, jump back in the seat. But this is really well done. This has that 1950s feel. It is scaled very well. The scale right off the bat looks good to me. Uh, you know, I might slope the back there a little bit. It's a little bit square there, but it looks fantastic. I'm trying to see if you did a little bit of, see like there, it looks like you did a color gradation, gradation on there. I did that on one of my builds recently. I'm not sure if you did or not. It looks really cool, man. And one of the reasons I like this era is, you know, you had some square stuff, you had some rounded stuff, you have some good integration of that. Really nice wood de detailing on this. Love the the fender wells. You know, like I said, one of the biggest compliments I get and that I certainly uh, would give to other people is there are a bunch of things on this build that I want to try out on my builds. These door panel edges add really good detailing there. I like how you hit the pivot. Really great lighting. Like, there's a bunch of things I want to check out on this in the workshop later. I want to check out your light color. Those came up really nice. Uh, fantastic build. The scaling inside is great. A lot of people will over uh, scale the interiors, and the interiors feel cavernous. This feels like I'm in a truck, and especially an old truck. I like the seat detailing. So there's a bunch of great details, and this is a fantastic build. Uh, thank you for sharing. And the next build here is the 1953 MBT Troop Carrier. So pretty basic thumbnail here. Do, hasn't had anything really done to it. Again, you're competing against your competitors. You saw like, you know, the last one had a lot of detail on that. So like to see that. Bunch of pictures here. Always good to have some pictures. Bunch of them here. You have things like, you know, a little bit of cleaning up on these pictures. They look a little rushed. You know, like you're setting up trims while you're doing them. So, but uh, some, some pictures in there. This is by uh, CG8379Gaming. So, description, the 1954 MBT troop carrier is a troop carrier built just after World War II to help replenish the number of troop carriers in service after the war. With space for 16 troops in the back and, and two including the driver and the cab, it was one of the smaller vehicles uh, of the time for being a 6x6 but still functional. Start a procedure and shifting. Enter the driver's seat on the left side of the truck. Start engine using 6 in the driver's seat. Wait for the truck's idle to settle. Shift up and down using up down. The gear order is reverse. Neutral. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In neutral when the truck spawns in. Alright. Length is 9 meters. Uh, 29.5 feet. Width is 3.25 meters. Height 3 and a quarter. Pad flat 6. Seats 18. 8,000. And mass is uh, 1277. Again, I would like to see your credits on there with any links to things you used. And because in this build challenge you had to use that chassis, I would like to see that. So it's always good to have credits for anything you use. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the build. All right, so here's the troop carrier. So a nice bit of XML in, on there. As you can see, it looks like two scoops. Uh, definitely two scoops of Raisin Bran here. As you can see, since I can walk through it. Uh, as the bumper, that's a cool bumper. I like that. A little bit uh, basic on coloring and detailing. For example, some things you could do here is you have the tent over the back. It looks like that would be a canvas tent. Uh, you know, if you did a little bit of 
uh, coloration difference on there, like go three or four units off the color and put in like generally you'd have some metal ribs in here and so like put a little darker color over the ribs that'll give it a little bit more detail you know a little bit basic here on the hood a little bit squared out there but uh not too bad flat windshield you know especially some of the military vehicles had some flat windshields on them this looks a little bit thin here i would uh put some frame rails in there you know you could, uh, you know, put a couple frame rails in there. As you can see, kind of looking through here, that looks awfully thin and spindly. Uh, six by six here. You know, this fender looks a little high. I would personally drop this fender down one and then on it. Uh, we do the same bumper on the back, which I like. It has the 16 pasture capacity in there. So it'd be good for rescues. Yeah, I'd, I, you know, I'd put, for example, you can, you can go right through and air uh, cooler and you can run one of those in there I would do something like that a little bit of detailing on that would help break up the pipe a little bit so let's go ahead and take a look inside all right so a little bit monochromatic here uh, you know it is a military vehicle but doing a little bit even a subtle color change is helpful in here as you notice uh, looks like we have two different seat colors I don't know if that's an oversight or what but you know that looks gray and this looks green that looks a little bit off to me you know, but look, we have like green on the button there. Uh, I don't know. That looks a little bit off to me uh, being like that. But, you know, not too bad. They have something sticking through here. You know, they have engines sticking through. For example, I would I put a enclosed pipe there, uh, you know, in a closed section. And then I would ramp up something like that. You know, not really any dash in here. Uh, let's go ahead and check the H menu. So steering's AD, WS throttle up, down, shift, and six is the starter. So let's check out the lights. Uh, there are headlights there. It looks like it appears one is out. I don't know if it's supposed to be out, but that one on the uh, on the passenger side is out. We have toggle button. Uh, what was that? Okay, it's trying to lift the hood. Uh, let's see. So that toggle button, again, I would label the toggle button. You can go in there and label your toggle button. I'm um, seeing if there's anything that will let me lift the hood latch. I don't see anything out here. Uh, let me check the workshop page really quick. Yeah, so I don't see anything else about that hood. You know, it's not labeled. So, again, I'm not going to play with it. It's not labeled. You know, but I would definitely do that. I would label that up. Uh, so let's go ahead and start up. All right, so we're up and running here. So let's go in reverse. So, I don't see any lighting in the back. Alright, brakes. Be nice to see some reverse lights, some brake lights on there. Not seeing any of that, really. Alright, let's go. Give it a drive. So, it definitely feels like a truck. Again, I like that. You know, it feels like... It feels like it's, it's correct size. It doesn't feel like it is a... Uh, you know, a sports car masquerading as a truck. It feels like a truck. I like that. Yeah, you know, a little bit chunky, I f it feels like, on the side view. A little bit square, but not bad. But this definitely, it feels like a truck. It drives like a truck. You know, it feels heavy, and it feels like an old truck. It just it, This could really use with a lot of detailing. There's a lot of area for detailing on here. For example... Uh, reverse lights, brake lights, little things like that, you know. The wheel, the fenders look enormous compared to the wheels. You see how much the fenders? I would go one width on the fenders there. The fenders look way too, uh, way too wide for the wheels they are encompassing. You know, I put some frame rails on there. It looks a little weird just sitting on pipes. Uh, you know, definitely, it looks like there are some, some issues with some color matching here. For example, like here. You got that. The seat's green. This one's uh, gray. Not a lot of detailing in here. Some exposed engine components there that I would kind of try to hide out. Uh, stuff like that. I would work on that a little bit. Uh, you know, definitely this could use a detail pass, uh, but, um, you know, it drove well and it fits the criteria. I would just uh, go over it and I would give it a detailing pass. So uh, thanks for submitting. I enjoyed using it. And the next build is the Morris MRA 1. So, no pictures, and we have an enclosed thumbnail here. Again, not really any work on the thumbnail there. Compared to your competitors, not really all that great so far. Uh, Ludazal, 
So the Morris MRA-1, this vehicle is based off the Morris MRA-1 from 1952 and is not a complete replica. It was still used as my primary reference, though. The vehicle was made for Captain Cockrell's Echo Build Challenge. Uh, max speed, 165 kilometers an hour. Uh, doors, yes, it has doors. Winch cable located in the trunk. Uh, British driver's seat on the wrong side. Weight, uh, 765. Hood open from cabin under dashboard. Uh, cable of refueling, tank on driver's side, hidden flashlight behind the driver's door, uh, fuel capacity 187, um, hood open from cabin and trunk opens, uh, recharging ports, battery cable anchors. Uh, again, no credits. Let's put a credit section in there. You used my chassis. Let's credit the chassis. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the build. So here we are with the Morris MRA-1. Let's go ahead and take a look here. So uh, nice detail in here. Really good uh, sculpting and shaping on the hood here. As you can see, it looks like that's got to be XML'd here. Yeah, it's got to be XML'd there for the hood pieces. Uh, the way it integrates with the fender, definitely. So, uh, really nice fender work here. Like, if you compare this to the last build, this has really good fender work. You see, the wheels look nicely encompassed. They stick out nicely. Really good shaping in here. Nice XML work. This is nice, subtle XML work. It's not doing that flash through where it you can really tell. It's nice and subtle and works well. Nice bumper here, winch in the bumper, winch controls there. Uh, looks like this is an XML piece here, so we get a little bit in there, but that allows you to really cozy up these lenses, which is nice. I like that nice uh, paintwork here. So a little bit monochromatic around here, like even doing a little bit of a, like this is good color work back here, like just doing a little bit of a different color way on the doors. Like I had that problem with a uh, challenge project I'm working on now where if you just do like a couple numbers lower on the um, R channel, you can kind of do it and it'll almost look like shadows and you go a little lighter, darker, darker down. Uh, it adds a little bit of detailing to it. Uh, some interesting work on the uh, fuel tanks here. It looks like just an enormous pipe which allows you to put the fuel hose anchor. That's a neat detail in there. But again, the fenders are really well done. I like this paint block work here on the sides of the bed. Uh, lights on there. A uh, little bit strange to have the lights on the tailgate, especially this, this vintage. You'd probably put them on the posts. So personally, I would have put the lighting on the posts right there. But that's just a nitpick here. Uh, I'm liking the exhaust pipe. Looks good there. We have a... A uh, pintle for a trailer. Uh, nice to have those little wheel wells in there. A little bit of uh, tools there. Spare tires. Nice little detail. It's a little bit monochromatic. I would have liked to see, you know, you don't necessarily have to go wooden uh, floor. But, like, for example, just a little bit of a color change in here. You know, the, sun, the light is going to hit the side. So maybe a hair darker on the side walls. And then just maybe a little bit brighter on the floor. But darker than the rails just gives it a little bit of depth you know but uh i really like the paint work is really good so let's go ahead and get in there so uh you know it, it's a looks like a military vehicle so it's going to be monochromatic it's british again he said it was british um you know so it's a little bit monochromatic because it's a military vehicle but again you can do that little bit of shadowing work you can do a little bit darker down the bottom that's where the mud would hit so little details like that are helpful sometimes uh, dash looks good, nice and basic, like you'd have done time. Fuel and liters, uh, kilometers an hour tack. Have a little passenger seat here. This feels nice and compact, like it should. Uh, you know, uh, shouldn't feel super cavernous. Uh, we had something down here I couldn't see, so I want to just jump down and see what it does there. That is the hood, so let's open that. Hood opens up, uh, nice detailing on here. So maybe that is an XML. Is that just... So something's XML'd in here. I think maybe. I don't know. Maybe it isn't. Um, I'm counting them out now. So these are fours. I thought it was a stretch piece, but these just look like fours. So really nice sculpting work on this. Uh, he did great sculpting work on the hood and the fenders. Uh, well done on that. Nice engine bay here. Uh, good, good job getting my engine stuck in your truck. That was a good work there. I'm going to steal your flashlight if you don't mind here because mine is out of battery. Okay, uh, but good work in here. Again, it's a little monochromatic, little things you could do that add some, you know, you have some stuff sticking through here. Again, I would have put, um, I just put a enclosed pipe there, you know, 
Um, I don't know. It's it's personal preference thing, but it doesn't look bad. Uh, you know, it's a little bit monochromatic in here. Again, it's a military vehicle, but if you went a little bit darker here and then a couple uh, lower or a couple lower R values on, you know, if you go lower on the R value, you get a little bit darker. Uh, you can go all the values down lower and then step them up and you get a little bit of shadow on there and it looks kind of nice, but it's uh, nicely well done in here. Let's go ahead and check the H menu. So steering's AD, WS throttle, up, down, shift gear, headlights is one, start, stop, engine is six. So didn't really have anything on the workshop page for instructions, but they're all here, so that's fine. Uh, again, headlights one, let's check those out. Yeah, you know, I really like Chicken Sore's color. Like these are on the bright side uh, for color there. I'm not I'm not getting any running lights on there. Let's try brakes. Okay, so you have brake lights, uh, no runnings. Uh, but you know, that's fine. Again, I would put them on the post and I would uh, you know do that. Or even better, like this type of vintage, you usually didn't have them up here. I would put a frame rail back here and I'll put them on the bumper personally. Kind of like how Chicken Sore did. That would be my personal uh, little, t uh, you know, ch uh, tip there. Throttle brakes, WS steering, headlights. I don't see a parking brake. We don't need it, but uh, that's fine. So let's go ahead and we'll up. We'll go in reverse first. No reverse light. That would be a nice detail to have. But again, really well done on the fender wells. the The side profile of the chassis looks really good. Uh, I like the backlight color. Feels like a heavy truck. That's what I want. I would probably, you know, it is an option. Uh, you know, a bunch of people have asked, and I had approved it. You can reduce the RPS max. I would do that personally if I were you. There's no windshield in here. You know, not the end of the world. Um, you know, personally, I would have XML'd in a wider windshield. But, um, you know, just so you have a windshield, because I can tell there's no windshield. You know, it seems like it's revving a little high. Again, I would just go back in there and reduce that, but it feels still feels like a truck. You know, it's, it's heavy, uh, and that's something that is really, you know, you want the truck to feel like a truck. You want a car to feel like a car, and a lot of people have never driven a truck, so they know what it feels like, but this feels like a truck to me. And just for that restart, again, you set that um, the clutch zero, just increase that value up a little bit. And that will stop that from happening. So really good on this. You know, it's tough to make a monochromatic vehicle like a military vehicle have good detailing. And I think you pulled it off with, especially the fenders are really well done on this one. Uh, the paint work on the bed is really well done. Not a huge fan of the way you did the lights. Personally, I would put a frame rail under here coming off of the tires. And I would have it go... Uh, right here, and if you're going to do some XMLing, I would XML a square block there to go through the exhaust, so the exhaust goes through the uh, through the frame rail, and you could put some lights in your bumper. Personally, that's where I put lights. I would put on uh, brake lights, directionals, and a reverse light. But uh, really great build. I think you did a great job on the fenders here. So uh, thanks for sharing. I enjoyed you. Thank you for watching, and special thanks to all the people who participated in the challenge. This is part one. In part two, I'll be going over the next seven vehicles, and then we'll have the results. See you then. Bye.